Our second stop for this series of Make 48 brings us to Purdue Polytechnic in Anderson, Indiana. This fully inclusive space will host seven teams of high school students who will be given a design challenge in the category of outdoor furniture. In just 48 hours, they will present their prototypes to a panel of judges to see if they will be lucky enough to move on to compete at nationals. with Make 48 and today I'm here with Kurt Graham. Yeah, we're glad you're here. We can start by going over to our wood lab over here. So we have CNC routers. Okay. We have our traditional table saws and other tools, but most everything in here is power. What else do printed. you do? Okay. 3D printing. Awesome. This is additive manufacturing or additive technology. Okay. We do everything from typical plastic filaments mm -hmm. all the way to carbon fiber. Nylon, Kevlar, uh, we even have a resin printer nice. that does more complex parts and adds a lot of detail to a part. That's pretty cool. So yeah. all the latest technologies, we're going to get to see some of them this weekend in action. We hope so, yes. I love it. We're going to go out to the space towards our metal area. Okay. We have industrial CNC. We have a vertical mill. We kind of want to use technology as close to industry standards as possible. It's important that we get our kids out into the field and be ready to use what's out there. Our newest addition is our CNC plasma cutter. Ooh. So we can model the part mm -hmm. with precision. Air pushes it through metal and allows it to cut the part. Well, this we'll way? go back to our hand fabrication area. Okay. We have horizontal and vertical band saws. All right. We have bending machines. We have rollers, drill presses. And then, of course, we have welding and uh, laser cutting in the welding room. Wonderful. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Let's get things kicked off today at Purdue Polytechnic Anderson. Purdue Polytechnic has nine statewide locations, Anderson being one of those locations. Purdue Polytechnic is an engineering technology school and we teach all trades related to STEM. We attract students who are shy, who are introverted, who are scared of that large campus experience and yet they are brilliant. They love to tinker. They love to work in maker spaces where they can build, design, destroy, make mistakes, and that's who we are. So we're gonna announce these teams right now because we're thrilled to have you guys here. The Flaming Artichokes! Me, Uriah, and Tim here all hail from Anderson High School, and our lovely mentor, Mr. Peril, has been teaching at Anderson High School for somewhere between one and a hundred years. More than 25. Tim, we like to sort of come up with some crazy idea that's never been done before. We've got the STEM Busters! We're at Anderson High School. I am on the robotics team. I'm also on the robotics team. I love, like, building stuff. I also got into Make 48 through Jacob's dad. Me and Harmony were in one of his classes. We have not fast, just furious. We're students from Anderson High School. We met a while ago because of a Rube Goldberg competition, and we just all started doing things together. We also joined robotics, and like that also helped get us here. Let's give it up for the APA Dream Makers. I go to Anderson Preparatory Academy, and I'm going on to freshman year. I am one of the academy teachers at the high school level. I serve as our superintendent and commandant. We're a small but mighty school. We just added maker spaces to our school about three years ago, and we now have three dedicated spaces, but we are new at all of the fun things that can come from it. So we thought, great way to get kids interested. We've got the HCC Dirt Devils. We're all from different schools, and we go to the it's a career center technical school. I do graphic design at the career center, and they're all in the same class. We're all, all three of us are in industrial automation and robotics. I'm in the afternoon class, they're in the morning yeah. class. So I had no yeah, idea. There's, I had no so the only two that really know each other are me and him. Like, we practiced with some old prompts from like past Make 48 competitions. Mm -hmm. Let's give it up for Randy's Rascals! We're from Frankton Junior Senior High School. We're all going to be seniors next year, and we're all looking towards engineering in the future. There's been kind of a history of engineering like in our family, so I've always just been kind of around it. I've always just liked, liked the problem solving side of it. I want to be a, a biomedical engineer. So I live on a farm, and so like finding solutions to improve the stuff and make it easier is what I'm, I, I would like to do. 
And last but not least, the Wingineers! We all go to Purdue Polytechnic High School, Englewood in Indianapolis, and we are all rising seniors. In the fall semester of the previous school year, we participated in Purdue University's Tech 120 course. And at the end of that course, they always have a big design competition. And we actually won third place in the competition. The synergy on that team was really good. Yeah. So we were just like, can't break up now, guys. Can't break up now, yeah. The mayor and his team are absolutely critical and foundational to the success of Purdue. They partner with us on so many levels and so many projects and activities. And on behalf of the city, I just want to welcome all of you here. We're just really excited to see all of the things that you're going to do. This year's challenge for Purdue Polytechnic Anderson is outdoor furniture. The problem, travel with chairs and furniture can be a cumbersome experience. This prototype should be a trendy and simple product that gets everyone asking, where'd you get that? Three, two, one. My thought is, is that, that we got two aspects of the chair. We got the, the seat with the legs, and then we got the back with arms and headrest. Do you have an idea of what I'm Draw it out, because yeah. I got no idea what you're saying. We need to find like a clear, like, clear plastic thing so it like makes a sliding pocket. You two over there for the length, for the width of an arm of the armrest. Do you want to go? Do you want to go a little bit wider, like about a four or five inch armrest? We can always do the four the the top of the armrest thicker than the, the poles that go underneath oh. it. The DeBruce Foundation has been delighted to partner with Make 48 and to sponsor these events because our mission is expanding pathways to economic growth and opportunity. Prior to the competition this year, we invited the students and captains to take the Agile Work Profiler so they could learn their top agilities. We are fairly compatible and balance each other out. We know our own strengths and our own weaknesses. So I stay out of the graphic area. And I that stay is, out of the technicalities yeah. and like structure. <laughs> yeah. It is so satisfying being a part of a group where not only you know exactly your role because you're really good at it, but watching your team members also be really good at their roles. Yep. Yes. So as you know, the 10 agilities are found in every single job across all sectors. You're gonna have the opportunity to not only use the skills that you have, but develop some of those other skills and your agilities. I'm a very visual learner. I need a picture drawn. So we were disagreeing on some idea changes just because I didn't quite understand what she was saying. So again, the insulated bags, the little like drawer slits underneath the table, those can fold. Cup holder, wireless chargers. When it's closed, it's two foot tall, four foot wide, eight inches wide. How could you attach something potentially that they could even like put it on their back and carry it? The advice I gave the teams involved a lot of basic patent principles and what to look for as they're designing. We've tried looking even on the internet, not only for a patent, but for a design and there, there hasn't been one. But one of the biggest question marks that basically was thrown up was dealing with the solar power aspect of it. That kind of threw a wrench into that initial idea with doing the technology piece. If a potential patent is in a team's way, I would look for first, is, is the patent something that's really impacting a key design feature of their product? If it is, is there a way to design around it? Working with the tool techs have been amazing. We were working with Tyler with the epoxy and he was pouring that, you know, watching that whole apparatus was pretty cool. All ready for surgery, <laughs> doctor. All right. Three minutes later. I was involved in Make 48. We were on the team last year in Indianapolis that won the competition. And so this year we decided to come back and contribute and help the teams to achieve their goals. How can you like, yes, you need this. You know what I mean? You have to really like kind of work on convincing, like telling people how bad they need it. It's nice to get some expert opinion when you start thinking of one direction you want to go in and they bring up a slightly different direction and that starts opening up other doors of conversation. The only thing I would say is when you put that on there, 
get some clean paper towels or shop racks or something and wipe it off, you'll get in a more even color. Okay. So wipe it off that stain. Yeah. So once you wipe, the, when you put the stain on, the longer you let it sit, the darker it'll get. But you also, if you wipe wipe it off, you'll get a, a cleaner, more even surface okay. color to it. Earlier, we were designing this cup holder and it's like collapsible. And I was having a hard time finding the dimensions. So one we finally got with like the tool tech and they were able to help us, it felt super like satisfying to be like, yeah, we finally got this design. So I'm here with Aaron Brown from ShopBot. Give us like kind of a rundown of how the ShopBot works, what it does for the viewers. This one is a three axis tool. We go up to uh, fourth axis, five axis motion uh, on some bigger, other more elaborate tools. Okay. This one does mostly just X and Y. There's a spindle on here that actually rotates a bit and you can use all different kinds of bits, all different sizes of bits and it cuts, that's what it does. So you basically cut stuff out of wood. You can do wood, you can do plastic, you can do aluminum all day, most composites. I mean, you can do a lot of, a lot of materials, anything non-ferrous. How long does it normally take to cut something out? And that depends on the complexity. I know most of our tools can do, say, a full sheet of plywood doing uh, cabinet parts. Okay. In 10 minutes, maybe. Oh, wow, that's pretty quick. So, uh, again, it does depend on what exactly you're cutting out. If you're going to use multiple types of bits in the same files, our ShopBot control software is pretty easy to use as well. It's a nice user interface that is not that complicated. Okay. So. All right, well, I don't know that I'm convinced that I could do it yet, <laughs> but that's all right. Thank you so much for showing us the ShopBot and what it can do for these teams this weekend. Hey, it's my pleasure. The wood shop people just finished like most of our actual structure, so they're in there building it right now, and I'm just babysitting these things so that we can flip them in a second and paint the other side. But these will be for our finished product, like this will be an add-on if you want to have a tic-tac-toe board on your table. <laughs> yeah, are we doing all three or just two? We just need to do two. Okay. Well, we can do all three, well, no, because uh, it might, the third one might split. Yeah, the third one is too close to the edge, so it might split, even with a free drill. Yeah, I agree. Probably one of our biggest challenges is like, it's got to be able to collapse, right? So trying to take that the smooth surface of a cornhole board, we had to make that seem as clean as possible, but it still has to be able to fold up and collapse and stuff. Developing the desire to want to have our product it was one of the challenges because it's essentially like a trash can hidden in an ottoman. The functionality is great, but half of the prompt was to make it look good and make people ask, where did you get that? I've personally never looked at someone's trash can and asked where they got that, so we had to solve that problem. Something that's kind of helped me is to imagine in front of the judges and would it be realistic can we pull this off or how are they going to think of it we try to look at is it buildable we want it to look feel act the same way as it, if it would if it if it was a production furniture piece with inventors it's really all about you know, making modifications and kind of figuring it out as you go through that process too so you're going to build something it's not going to work it's not going to be perfect the first time it never is you have to you know put in time and effort and you shouldn't be afraid to do that I got the Murphy's oil soap so we can like clean yeah. the boards. Um, are there any other bottom pieces? Uh, this, one, but this one's kind of split a little bit. Um, this one. That might be better. Yeah. It's really important to give yourself permission to fail. When I was younger, I would be what maybe a slight perfectionist, but it's the paralysis that comes for perfectionism that keeps you from being able to do great things. You know, giving yourself permission to fail, but not giving yourself permission to give up. We've been working on the trophy for uh, the first place winner. We incorporated a lot of the equipment here, a lot of the different processes. We use some traditional machining. 
We use some additive manufacturing in the 3D printing of the airplane woodworking. So those are a lot of the concepts that we try to get our students to learn and understand before they go out into working in the world of manufacturing. Some cool features about this trophy is being that it's outdoor furniture. We did make a little floating table here. I took the uh, Make 48 airplane design and I revised it a little bit. That way we could do an epoxy cast on the top so I could put a bunch of LEDs in it to make it light up. And we'll mount that as the umbrella to the top of our umbrella stand through the middle of our picnic table. We got a few more pieces to add. We're going to bring the city of Anderson. We're going to add the Make 48. I think this encompasses, like you mentioned, the ingenuity of the Purdue mindset, and this community really embraces that. I think we all want this really bad. We're the first ones at our school to do it. It'd be pretty cool to start it off with a big old trophy. I think we got this competition in the bag. Honestly, I think we're winning. I will be happy even if we lose. Me too. Honestly, it was a good experience. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Even though we hate the lack of sleep right yeah. now, but we're going to love this experience and think about it later. I think I'm nervous because they said I was going to have to do it. <laughs> I say, I'm sitting pretty easy on it, right? I don't have to do anything. If somebody emails you in the middle of your school semester saying, hey, you want to come do this inventing competition over the course of 48 hours, you should say yes, because you never know what could happen. <laughs> Purdue Polytechnic Anderson. I would love to announce our very prestigious judges. We have Miss Faye Barber Dansby. Well, I worked in manufacturing 20 years before I came to academia. So thinking about storage and spacing and shipping. We've got Tom Gray, the CEO of Make 48. My background was product development. So I was more a specialist of taking a product to market after the prototype. And Make 48 was created with the co-founders of ours and they were prototype builders. So together, we knew all of the, uh, the process of taking a product to the consumer. And we have Mr. Dave Regal, who's from Purdue University as well. Thank you, Dave. Everybody give him a wave. The simplicity of the design, the practicality of the design, you know, those th sorts of things are what I'm kind of looking for. The first team to pitch will be the Flaming Artichokes. Today here, we're going to be showing off a bit of a uh, product for the bit of a camper inside of you. As you guys can see with the sleek leather straps that have the uh, magnets that allow it to just easily snap in place. We can take out the two leg panels that are inside. Each are going to be attached near the bottom. One of the add-ons for the legs is one of these adjustable feet that you can swivel on this ball and socket joint. Whenever you stand it up, you have a perfectly level table with our great logo in Dridge. You can just open this back panel and just like that, you got a chair. It's cheaper than going out to a store and buying a chair and a table because it's the artichoke. The HCC Dirt Devils, come on down. These cornhole boards come together and they make a table that is perfect for almost any get together or anything. So when we bust this thing down and uh, pack it up, it turns into a two foot by four foot by seven inch space that's taken up in your car. Would you consider different sizes possibly? These are actually regulation cornhole boards, two foot by four foot. Uh, there are tailgate sizes. They're actually two foot by three foot. So if you wanted to order those, those are easily changeable. Not fast, just furious. And we would love to tell you about our portable couch. We got those heavy coolers full of drinks and ice, and the kids can't expect to carry them all. We decided make it able into a wagon also. But we also have a little special can opener here for, you know, the Coca-Cola drinks. <laughs> so you pull it open from the top. This would be produced for family friendly. To me, it's kind of low to the ground. So as I'm trying to sit down, I'm probably gonna fall down. <laughs> so what do you do for those of us who aren't as agile as uh, others may be? Well, we would add legs that were extendable and have little locks in them. We would still be able to fold it down. I would consider not doing that and have, it's funny to watch Faye fall down at the campsite. <laughs> 
the APA Dream Makers. Our product is actually a product with purpose. It functions as a backpack and it turns into your travel throne. When fully built, it will be a 17 inch seat. It is at a 105 degree angle for ergonomics and to make it comfortable. As one of those bigger sized people, when I go and I'm in a camp chair or something like that, it's scary and embarrassing for me that it might break or I might not be able to get up. And so with a chair like this, I can do what I need to. My only concern would be, to me there's a lot of little pinch points there for little fingers. How could you sort of resolve that if it was sort of uh, put into production? One of the designs for the arms is that they were going to be bigger and further away from that, so that keeps that away from being able to you know, slice in that point. But as far as down at the legs, that's something we are still trying to figure out. The Stem Busters. Our product today called the Power Table. These are the feet for our legs here. They can be removed for easier travel. And then on the bottom here, they just screw by the top. They can be adjusted to size. It can be enough table space for two people or open it up and have enough for four. But on the top, we have LEDs for nighttime use. And we have a checkerboard for chess or checkers, any game you like, or just decorative. And we have wireless charging. Randy's Rascals. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you here today with great excitement and pride to introduce to you a revolutionary product that will transform how you relax and play games. I present to you the Lean and Bean, a chair that folds into a cornhole board. You unfold your Lean and Bean and instantly becomes your haven for relaxation. Its ergonomic design offers unparalleled comfort, allowing you to lean back and unwind with ease. But wait, there's more. With a simple transformation, the Lean and Bean takes the gaming experience to a whole new level. As the chair unfolds, the backrest doubles as a cornhole board. Together, let's lean back, aim high, and toss our way to success. The win engineers. According to surveys conducted by many sites from BuzzFeed to the New York Times, a significant number of people have listed cleaning up trash after an outdoor activity as their least favorite part. That's why we decided to make the auto bin a multi-purpose outdoor trash can within reach. The olive bin can actually fold and fit into a strap very easily, so it'll make transporting so much more simpler. We made this design by taking the concept of a collapsible trash can and used a CAD design to make a piece of furniture around it. We know that doing activities outdoors is always more enjoyable with friends and family. So we made the Audubon into a game through our customized game pieces. The Audubon is truly the best way to stay clean in any outdoor situation. You did a fantastic job today, pitching. We'll have the judges deliberate and then we'll bring you guys back. I'm gonna be judging today looking really at the consumer experience. So I'm looking at the largest amount of people who could probably be able to carry the product. The simpler thing is to put together, take apart, all around, the better it is for a guy like me. <laughs> for one person to set up, it would be a little bit complicated, uh, at least initially. I can sit in this and it looks comfortable. I mean, you know, the armrest, I think it's, it's important to have armrests as much as possible. I thought the concept of a seat and a trash can makes all the sense in the world. It does. And I mean, they made trash fun, but <laughs> it's still trash. <laughs> the having this, the backrest is, is really, uh, you know, most times they don't think about that. A lot of these products are heavy. And this one sort of solves the problem of carrying other things. I want to thank the teams. You guys are amazing individuals with bright, bright futures ahead of you. The runner-up heading to nationals is... Lean and Bean by Randy's Rascals! <laughs> the winner of the $2,000, the custom-made trophy and headed to nationals is... Travel Lounger by Not Fast, Just Furious! <laughs> she said that was like, wait, who's that? I know, I was like, who's the Travel Lounger? I don't even know. This is so unreal. It's so surreal. It's so surreal. Oh my god. Oh, we are feeling really shocked. I know, you're right. I'm a little bit crying. We care for one another. That's what made us win. It was beautiful. It, I would 100% do it again. <laughs>